battle against Mother Nature rages on. has one piece of advice for anyone considering going out tonight. Don't. Lots of roads are flooded, many uh, closed because of mudslides, Mission you know, Valley. It's nice today. It must have seemed like deja vu for residents of the trailer park. mess all over North County. There's been so much rain. Roads. The ground is just The San Luis down. River caused a 100-yard stretch of a road to be urban away. flooding, small stream, and creek flooding as well. One to three inches expected along the coast. The surface of the bridge is about two feet Still more damage and evacuations because of rain and mudslides and general misery in a city noted for its picture perfect we now weather. have the wettest January on record that we may get large-sized hail, lightning, maybe tornadoes. Nearby, on. residents have been evacuated. Some homes are teetering on the edge of a broken road. Officials are also making rescues from the river. Since the 1980s, the Arizona crossing on Pacific Street, built to take motorists across the San Luis Rey River between Oceanside's downtown area and the harbor, has been flooded out or washed away in storms almost 10 times. So finally, after years of rebuilding the crossing and the untold thousands of dollars spent on an otherwise temporary bridge, a permanent solution was devised. I've been here most of my life in the city of Oceanside, and I lost count, lost count on how many times this Arizona crossing washed out. And that causes all the people discomfort to go all the way around to come in the back way from the harbor, all the businesses, all the beach, all these other people that have to get down here on a daily basis. So it's about time is the underline. It's about time we're doing this. And I do appreciate everybody that's been involved in this, from city staff to everybody from the state and the federal government that got us to this point today. One, two, three. At the groundbreaking ceremony in October of 2006 to begin work on the new Pacific Street Bridge, city manager Peter Weiss talked about the storm-plagued road and what led to this historic occasion. This has actually been a long time coming. It's been a number of years. It was in the mid-90s when the city council directed staff uh, to look at alternate ways of dealing with the crossing that was washing out. With the, with the project as it is now, with the crossing, every few years we'd get a heavy rainstorm and it would wash out. Uh, in times when there's a heavy rainstorm and it doesn't wash out, we are obligated as a city to remove it uh, because of the flooding impacts the road creates both here and upstream. The bridge is, is basically reinforced concrete, which it's regular concrete, and then you have reinforcing steel in it. And then it is post-tension, which is like cable strands that get stretched tight afterwards, kind of pulls it all together. That's typical of construction in California. Letting the public know that the harbor and surrounding shops were still open for business was the subject of an ongoing public information campaign. Huge banners were erected at all entrances to the harbor, inviting people to come enjoy the harbor and that all shops are open during construction. When the parking lot was removed to make room for construction of the bridge and redesign of Harbor Drive, the free Harbor Shuttle was placed into service to help people get around the harbor effortlessly. Construction manager Craig Johnson went on to say how working in water and on marshy lands does pose more of a challenge. We're in a environmentally sensitive area, and so we have to, to make sure we don't do
do anything that damages the habitat for some of the species that have been identified to be endangered or protected. Larry Freeberg is a program manager with the Chambers Group, hired by the city to ensure compliance with environmental regulations. Well, right now, it's also in the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. It's you can't disturb any migratory birds in their nesting process. Our monitors go out and look within 300 feet of the project every morning to see if there's any nesting birds. If they find any, then we have to stop and put some type of sound abatement in there so any noise will not disrupt that bird nest. There's two protected species under the federal laws. It's a clapper rail, and it's a marsh bird that wades out here and uh, fishes in the shallows, and a California gnat catcher. Now, these were permitted approximately four years ago. They wanted to protect the clapper rail because it has been seen once in the last 20 years here. So they want to be sure protected during the breeding season in particular. Uh, the gnat catcher on the other side of the railroad track over here is some marginal habitat for the California gnat catcher, another protected species. In regard to protecting fish, if you notice there's the white tubes that are around the fill or bermed areas. Those are turbidity or silt curtains. Below that hangs a curtain. So when they're putting the fill in, the silt that's in the water drops out behind those curtains. It's not allowed to go farther out in the river, thus protecting the fish that are in the river. Each time we've coordinated well at, with team, with the construction contractor, they've responded to our recommendations to them. And we're, again, working through the city, they've been very responsive when there's need to be. While the turbidity curtains were set up along one side of the river, on the south side, culverts were brought in to help maintain the river's flow after the earthen berms used by the construction vehicles encroached on the river. Alan Greenwood of San Diego Trout, a consortium of outdoor enthusiasts, scientists, and conservationists dedicated to improving or maintaining the health of the county's rivers and their legacy as trout fisheries, talked about the San Luis Rey River from a historical perspective. Well, in San Diego, we've had a history of native fish. Primarily, the number one was the rainbow trout and the steelhead which utilized the streams, the major watersheds, and San Luis Rey, what we're sitting on, is one of the major ones. In fact, it still has the most water of any watershed in all of San Diego County. It has more than San Diego River. The steelhead used to come up here in large quantities, in large runs. They're called runs, and they would come up and spawn way up and go as far up as uh, San Ysidro Creek, way up on the Warner's Ranch, above what is now the Henshaw Dam. The runs here would be several thousand fish without any problem going up the river and spawning. Some of these fish were caught, actually caught by fishermen, as late as the 1950s. And some runs were seen as late as the 1970s, but they were very small compared to earlier runs. Well, to, to get to the harbor, where they put the harbor in, they put um, what was called an Arizona crossing. It was a giant one, though, okay, where they just take filled dirt and fill in across the river. And then they put a large pipe, which are culverts, so that the water can go through. The problem is that we can get huge rains here in Southern California, but they come very quickly with a large amount of water. Well, when it goes through these culverts, the water goes through, you get a vortex. And when you do this, what happens is the water speeds up going through, just like if you took a nozzle of a hose and you have the water just going out to here, you put the nozzle on, turn it up, you can make the water squirt way out there because you've sped up the, the rate of water flow. Well, the same thing happens there, and when it happens in these culverts, you do it, it happens so great, fish can't go through anymore. It works against them. So the steelhead trying to go upstream are stopped, so it becomes a barrier. On a glary Wednesday in June 2007, we watched as the first piles for the construction bridge were driven into the riverbed. Dave Toshak, senior engineer with the city of Oceanside, explained the process. So the, the pile that we're driving for this job is temporary and it's driven a, a, a steel shell or steel tube or a wooden pile like a telephone pole is driven in the ground temporarily to build the bridge. The other operation, the drilled shaft, uh, is drill the hole. Once they drill the hole, you pour the concrete into it and that's the permanent column that holds up the concrete structure. So you have two operations. One is temporary to support the, the spans of the bridge. The other is a drilled hole to actually support the main the structure when it's completed. After the concrete gets hardened up and after they're done building the structure, then they'll come back out and pull those piles out of the ground.
Just about a year after the groundbreaking, the bridge construction is in fact ahead of schedule. The temporary structure to support the construction crew is in place, while an untrained eye would be hard pressed to detect amongst the pilings, equipment, and mounds of dirt the beginnings of what will become Oceanside's sleek, curved new roadway. In the spring of 2008, the structure was ready for the road surface to be poured. Today we're doing a uh, concrete deck pour, and it's the process where we're putting the concrete that will be the future riding surface of the bridge. Uh, you're probably pouring about 800 to 900 yards of concrete today. The process is basically this. You have rebar that spans the length of the structure, kind of the top of a box. Um, you place concrete, as what you see here is the fresh concrete. Uh, uh, you see in the background is a deck finishing machine. And it's a machine that basically spreads the concrete out and it spreads it out and leavens it out. Finishes and puts a smooth gloss to the bridge and there's also augers on there to push the concrete forward to keep the surface smooth and level as the machine progresses forward. Uh, there's laborers involved, there's masons involved that finish the tighter spots on the bridge and clean it up. There's also what they call a broom finish on this bridge. Um, it's called broom finish because it resembles uh, the, the sweet marks of a broom and that provides friction for vehicle traffic. It actually has some texture to it, so that the rubber tires will be able to stop on the bridge. Once they finish the bridge deck, uh, they'll go into a, uh, a window of cure time. The white material is a curing compound. Um, also, they put down blankets to keep the bridge moist. Those two things, the curing compound and the keeping the deck moist, slow down what they call the heat of hydration for the concrete. It's the process by which concrete gets its strength. After the, cure, after the cure period of approximately 10 days, which is a requirement, uh, they'll take a sample of the concrete and they'll put it under a hydraulic ram and they'll break it. And they'll know how strong the concrete is. With those two processes accepted, then the contractor will stress the bridge. I, he'll put strands inside the structures, inside the walls of the structure, and he'll stretch them. And that adds strength to the structure. It puts a, it puts a, a preload in the bridge, opposite of what traffic might put on it. Now that we have the bridge at its elevation, uh, we have to now bring up the existing surfaces of the roads to match it. We have to rip out the old road. We have to build retaining walls, in this case MSC walls, mechanically stay by his earth walls. And then we'll be able to bring up the roadway to the bridge elevation. Same thing on the north side of the bridge, Harbor Drive used to be flat level parking area with a street to it. What we're gonna end up doing there is again, another MSC wall, retaining wall and we'll be bringing up the old road to the elevation of the new bridge. You build a wall, you put dirt behind it, and it's basically a retaining wall. It retains the soil behind the wall to get to the elevation that you need your road to be at. In this case, we're trying to get the road up to the, the old road, reconstruct it to get it to the elevation of the new bridge. Harbor Drive basically increases in elevation at the point where it meets the bridge by 11 feet. So in order to do that, again, we're restricted by space. We have to put a retaining wall in, same type of wall, MSC wall, and that allows us to bring the elevation from the existing elevation of the, the harbor up to the new elevation of 12 feet that meets the structure. The last thing, once the bridge is built and stressed, uh, there's another operation they call grouting. They'll, they'll pour concrete slurry into the, into the grout. And they'll, uh, it's a concrete paste that they, they protect the strands with so they don't decay over the years. Once all the false work is done, once all the steel and the timbers and all that material is gone, the contract can then start its process of removing all the dirt and all the rock that was placed here temporarily to build a structure.